about um, what's happening, how we see the world, how we see our impact in the community, and um, I'll give you the opportunity to really kind of think through this with us and get excited. So I'd like to turn it over to Dan Gelati. Um, one thing I was thinking as I look at all you folks, I'm going to be uh, drawing on these boards and like showing you things. And I was thinking the closer in you are, the more viewable it will all be and you won't have the obstructed seats. Uh, that uh, There were no cheaper for you to sit in the obstructed seats than the ones right in front here. So um, if you, not going to make it, but if you want to slide in, I think you'll see more, uh, more, more stuff. I'm going to say right out front, at the beginning that uh, we are working on opening a second store within the next year or so. But, thank you. but more importantly, today is really about sharing how a second or a third store is really just a part of our big plan to create more good in the world. So here's what we're going to talk about today. We're primarily here to talk about our exciting plan for the future, which we call Wheatsville's Big Direction. We're going to talk a little bit about change, about why co-ops are important, talk a tiny bit about the grocery business, and then we're going to end with a really cool exercise called the Human Shuffle that you'll help us with um, to help us figure out a little bit more feedback and opportunity around the big direction. We're also going to start with an exercise, so if you could take out your index card and your mini golf pencil that you got upon entrance, you can keep those. Well, you can't keep the index card, you can keep the pencil. So, I'm going to ask you to imagine that you moved to a town, you had to move, you had to leave Austin, it's very tragic, so we can pause for a moment and think, oh my gosh, what would make me have to leave Austin? And then, we think about, you're living in a town, you need to figure out where to shop. What two to three things would a grocer need to do to inspire you to drive past a nearer supermarket or a natural food store to go to that more distant grocer? Okay, so I'm going to move on forward. Um, we're going to have Rosemary come up in a second and uh, talk to you about our board ends policies. And board ends policies, like that sounds really boring because it has, maybe has the word board in the front and policies at the end, but it's really not boring. It's really exciting and awesome and incredible and important. And so I need you guys to have your hugest ears on to listen because it's really the foundation of everything else that we're going to talk about today. And it's really the foundation of everything that we're doing at Wheatsville now and for the future. So. Uh, please um, pay attention to what Rosemary's saying, and uh, she's going to come talk about ends right now. They are written here so you can follow along if you like. It's the funny thing about policy that we think that it should be boring, and then we start talking about it, and it ends up being really exciting and engrossing and consuming. It's a strange thing. You can ask any of the board members about it and I'll explain the phenomena to you. <laughs> but we are a policy governance board. So the board is responsible for developing and maintaining policies that describe our processes and our responsibilities, and most importantly, our outcomes. So like, why do we exist? And through years of ongoing conversation with the board, um, with our operations management team, and with our owners, we've been having this you know, question, inquiry about why are we here? <laughs> Maybe back in the 70s, it was like, dude, why are we here? Um, but, you know, like, for us, really, it's like, what does it mean that we're a co-op? What are the values of owners, and, and how do we want to engage with that? What are the possibilities for this organization? What can we do together as a co-op? Um, what difference can we make in the world? How can we transform society? So our ends policies are a way of codifying and um, explicitly describing what the underlying purpose of this organization is. And through years of ongoing conversation, thinking about what difference can we make in society, we've realized it's not just about the popcorn tofu. That <laughs> we love that, but we really are about transforming society towards cooperation, justice, and non-exploitation. And we think we can really do it, which might sound a little crazy, but it's one step at a time. <laughs> and I think we're on our way, and all of you guys are part of the evidence of that. So our co-op ends are here. Um, Wheatsville will be at the forefront of a transformed society that has a thriving community centered on kindness, generosity, and hospitality, a robust cooperative economy, 
easy access to sustainable, healthy food solutions. And these seem like simple statements, but these aren't things that we're going to do in a year. Um, and we think that there's a real profound thing about all these that might seem really simple, but think about what would it be like to have a community that's centered on kindness, generosity, and hospitality. Like, I get goosebumps when I think about that. <laughs> like, what that could be like, what would be different in our world. So that, I just wanted to share that with you as the foundation for everything that we're trying to do. While we are trying to celebrate popcorn tofu and we hope that it's delicious <laughs> and customer service is really important, um, it's really about these big, big things um, that are happening through this seemingly simple and yet foundational act. I love, you guys might have seen this Andy Warhol quote, a grocery cart is the most powerful vehicle for social change. <laughs> right up next to air and water, food is pretty important. And that's one of the things that's so wonderful about Wheatsville being a food-centered consumer co-op. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Dan. All right. Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, so the great thing about the ENDS policy, that being foundational, is um, it tells me, as general manager of Wheatsville, and our staff, what we're doing. It really tells us, like, when you're making decisions, when you're thinking about the future, you know, what are, what are you doing? What are we working towards? Um, it's not just about tomorrow, you know, making sure that we have enough groceries on the shelf to make enough money for the first quarter returns or whatever. It's about the future that we're trying to create in Austin and the world. So, I'm going to just talk about each end very briefly. Um, one great thing about having ends, it, it's a demonstration of the fact that we're a values-based organization. And so everything else we do is based on, you know, are we doing these things? So we have a, these are relatively simple ends because we wanted everyone to be able to remember them. Uh, but I've actually just taken them slightly shorthanded or changed them slightly to interpret them. And I didn't change them, I interpreted them so that we could just kind of talk about them uh, in, on the operations side a little more clearly. And so I'm just going to show those to you right now. We uh, interpret a thriving community centered on kindness, generosity, and hospitality uh, simply as, or not so simply, as happy people. We consider a robust cooperative economy, we just generally say co-op economy. That's really simple. And then we interpret easy access to sustainable, healthy food solutions as uh, local, organic, sustainable food. <clears throat> so that's the first one we're going to talk about. We are really you know, think that, that local, organic, and sustainable food are better for the consumers. It's better food better tasting food, it's generally healthier food, uh, and we think that's a good thing. We think it's better for the producer. It's better for the producer if it's organic or grown sustainably, it's safer to just produce that kind of food than it is traditional or now you know, conventional product. And it's better for the environment as well. Uh, we also think it's better, sorry, for the producer because, uh, for local, because they have place to sell their wares, uh, and that's a good thing for our local uh, economy. And if you're talking about animal products and things, it's also more humane. Most of the products that we sell at Wheatsville are much uh, more uh, humane than what you'd find at the standard uh, grocery store or even other natural food stores. So moving on to a society centered on kindness, gender, and hospitality, the more happy people. So last year we conducted a shopping study in which Wheatsville came out as the friendliest, most helpful store in Austin. So <clears throat> Yeah, that's pretty exciting. So we strive to live this every day. I hope that you experience it yourself. And we think that by being kind and friendly in store, uh, that we can have a rippling positive effect in all of Austin. Wheatsville shoppers can go home feeling happy and appreciated, and maybe spread this to their family, their friends, their neighbors. We want more people to have easier access to this positive experience. So a robust cooperative economy our co-op is a pooling of our community resource. We pool it so that we can accomplish things that we can't do alone. Growing a more cooperative economy means more shared wealth and benefit. When Wheatsville has success, 
Thousands of people share in that success. We also want more co-op economy because co-ops are locally controlled. And we all know that local business is better. Most of us have seen the studies that show the economic impact of local being you know, basically three to one uh, over a, an out of uh, uh, town business. Co-ops are also more responsive. We're in the community. We're responding, we're with you. That's a great thing about cooperatives. In Wheatsville's case, specifically, we do great things with our financial success. We share it with owners, we share it with staff, we share it with our local community, uh, through local community groups and charitable organizations. Last year, Wheatsville donated $52,000 to local community groups, like Urban Roots, other great organizations. Groups that are doing really important things in our community $52,000 is a little over 20% of our total net income going to uh, local community groups doing good in, in the world. If you ever see like a lot of businesses like, we give 1% of profits back to good. <laughs> 20 is better. <laughs> and finally, we love growing the cooperative economy because co-op jobs are good jobs with good pay and benefits. And we're a friendly and caring employer too. Today and every day at Wheatsville, we are building on the foundation for the future that we want. And this is really good and important work that we're doing. So for us, the plan for the future is this thing called Wheatsville's Big Direction. It's the embodiment of our future. So I'm gonna lay this out for you, the path and the process that we're gonna be using the big direction doesn't answer all our questions, but it does give us that map and direction and where we're heading to. So I'm gonna do some drawing and filling in to show our big direction, but before I do that, I wanna define what big means. It really does have a meaning, and it is in all caps for a reason, not just because I'm shouting. Um, so B is for business. We are a cooperative business and we're in the grocery business, so we're gonna be excellent grocers. I hope you experience that whenever you're in the store. I is for is, kind of makes sense. But it also means that our big direction is ongoing now and into the future, that we're gonna make this plan real. That's the plan with the is. G is for good. And while it's hard work to be an excellent grocer, being an excellent grocer isn't enough. We are more than excellent grocers. So in total, business is good, meaning we're a thriving, financially successful, and growing entity, and that our business as a co-op specifically does good things in our community and the world. Finally, direction shows that we are intentional and focused. We have a point in what we're doing and doing our work. We have a vision and a plan. I'm gonna move this over so people can see the rest of your very okay. practical drawing. does have a, an illustrious art background. So That's right, you can tell. <laughs> I'm not using it today, but I do have one. <laughs> Here I, go. I had something to wipe my brow, but it's gone now. <laughs> okay, so here's Wheatsville's, oh, thank you. As I said earlier, you know, Louis Armstrong, needed the hanky all the time. I take it, I'm in good company, I guess. Um, so this is Wheatsville's big direction. Right here. This is Wheatsville today at 3101 Guadalupe, the store that we know and love. Right now, we are having some opportunity for owner feedback. That's happening sort of right here. And we're gonna take that owner feedback and interaction and we're gonna assess and adjust and we're going to do that for the entirety of the big direction. <coughs> and we're also going to assess and adjust. So an important component of the big direction is that in order to accomplish all the good things that we want to, we're going to focus on opening additional Wheatsville stores. That's the plan. 
So by having more Wheatsville stores over the next one, three, five, 20 years, uh, we're gonna have lots more owners and shoppers, we're gonna sell lots more groceries, and we're gonna do a lot more good in the world because of that. So this is basically one store, somewhere down the road, maybe in a year, we'll have two stores, sometime after that, three stores, four stores, and the numbers don't exactly matter, but it's the idea of having more stores that I wanted to show you. The Big Direction basically takes all the good that we're doing at 3101 Guadalupe and amplifies it. By doing this, we're accomplishing our co-op's organizational ends. Successful execution of Wheatsville's Big Direction is gonna create more local organic sustainable food, more cooperative economy, and more happy people. And as I said, built into the big direction are opportunities for owner feedback and assessment and adjustment all the way through the process. This isn't just like a, you know, we're bowling forward no matter what happens. We're constantly checking, constantly getting feedback, constantly assessing and adjusting through the process. So, going a little bit deeper here, we like our local organic We like local, organic, and sustainable food. We're really excited about it. But no matter how successful we are at 3101 Guadalupe, we'll be limited in selling more local, organic, and sustainable food simply by how many folks we can fit in the store or how many folks will come a distance to shop at Wheatsville. So right now, as an experiment, you know, we're, really, we're really excited about our four local egg producers that we have. That's what those are. They represent four local egg producers. They're nice little brown eggs. <clears throat> but hey, that's about what we have for demand. But wouldn't it be really even more cool if we had enough demand to support, you know, there's four, five, six, seven, eight. Sure. Right now we have four local egg producers. You know, there's eight, well, you know, what if we could get to a dozen local egg producers or even more? That's possible through more locations having more uh, chance to sell more, more uh, local products and organic and sustainable products to more people. That's just one example of what could happen with the Big Direction. <clears throat> so more co-op economy. So our store right now generates about $16 million in sales. This is uh, Jada, the video guy's... Uh, daughter drew this for me. Uh, it's a shopping bag. So that's about uh, $16 million in sales, let's say. And this t-shirt, this is Wheatsville staff t-shirt, you can tell, it looks like a t-shirt. 136 staff as of last week. <coughs> With more stores, we could get more of the grocery dollars in Austin flowing through our cooperative. So I'm gonna ask you guys a question. How big how much money did people spend on groceries in Austin last year? Any, any ideas? Sure. Nobody's gonna throw out any number? 250, 250 million, that's good. Anybody else? How much? Uh, 2.5 billion, that's easy. So between 2.5 and 2 mi million and billion. That's good. We get to what we actually uh, uh, I roughly believe, it's a little hard to pin this down, but essentially we, Austinites purchased one billion dollars, that's dollars, American dollars, in groceries in, in the Austin area last year. So you remember, Wheatsville, we did sixteen million dollars. A little less than two percent of the billion dollars of groceries that are already out there being bought by people. So clearly there's a lot of dollars being spent on groceries that are not being spent at a cooperative. Wouldn't it be great with two or three or five stores for our co-op to be selling 
more of the groceries people are already buying from somewhere else. And potentially, other co-op businesses might spring up with us as a large customer. So we're pretty excited about Red Rabbit Cooperative Bakery, a new co-op in town that uh, make uh, pretty yummy vegan donuts. We're one of their biggest customers. I think we probably we are their biggest customer. If we had two stores or three stores or five stores, they would likely grow along with us and be able to add more uh, bakers having cool co-op baking jobs in their life uh, and expand that, that community. Or other co-op bakeries might spring up around to help support us. Or we'd love to buy from a cooperative janitorial service. Wouldn't that be cool? And if we were a big enough customer, we could uh, start to drive demand for that sort of thing. So maybe HEB doesn't want a cooperative janitorial service, but we do, and we would support them. We don't have to create the janitorial service. Someone else who wants to do that can. We're going to be grocers. But they can do that because we're being excellent at being a grocer. And we're uh, growing the cooperative economy by doing that. And we helped Red Rabbit along the way, and we'd help other people along the way too. So we'd assist in that. So moving along to more happy people. Oh, I didn't do this fun part. We'll do this as, let's just for fun say 100 million in grocery bags. And uh, we'll do, you know, what if there are 750 Wheatsville staff people having good co-op jobs in Austin, feeling good about where they worked, being friendly and helpful and generous and hospitable. That could be cool. <laughs> so more happy people. So more stores basically create a lot more chances for people to be part of our community, our family, uh, to experience the excellent and caring uh, service that you guys get when you come into our store. That's really a good thing. We think that's a positive thing in the world. We, th we hear from people continuously, wow, you made my day. We had, you know, I was having a terrible day and I came in and the deli totally made me happier. My kids were really bummed out and then they got to the register and they got a sticker and they were so stoked. And like we hear these stories all the time. Like we really feel good about the way that our little grocery store can have a positive impact. And we're really excited about the way that that little grocery store, we can have some more of them and create more of that in the world. Um, so currently we sell about, serve about 12,000 owners a week. So. Uh, 12,000 shoppers a week. We have 11,000 owners. You know, if that was quadrupled, so what is it, 48,000 people in Austin having access and shopping at Wheatsville, you know, maybe there's 40,000 owners, something like that. That'd be pretty exciting, right? So the Big Direction also creates more research for us to do more good in our community. Our friends at PCC have caught up with eight stores and $150 million in sales in uh, Seattle have done some amazing things with their success. Two things they've done. They've preserved five farms and 600 acres of farmland uh, through a nonprofit that they started. And they provide more food for people with, in need. Uh, they donated over 65,000 uh, 65, pounds of food uh, to uh, food banks in Seattle in 2010. And that comes from the scale that they've been able to generate. Okay, so hopefully, I gotta move along here. Been dawdling. Hopefully this sounds uh, exciting to everybody. But I know that change can be, it's change, maybe new folks. That can be a little bit scary. Some people might be thinking, but I like Wheatsville like it is now. It's so great now, why do I wanna change it? And you know, what if it's not in my neighborhood? Or what about this? Or, there's lots of reasons people might have concerns about change. So we're going to play a little game here. This is 1976. This is now. This is 2046. Did uh, anything change from 1976 to now? Have there been changes? <laughs> so all kinds of stuff, right? All kinds of stuff happened. Some of it was good. Some of it was bad. Some of it was scary. Some of it was awesome. There was barely a Wheatsville. Now there's you know, thriving Wheatsville. So change, change happened and that, that was good. So we can assume that change is going to happen from now to 2046, right? And it's going to be like this again. Holy smokes. All kinds of things are going to change. Crazy things are going to change. Some of them are good, some are going to be bad, whatever. 
The big direction, though, helps us to plan a course through all that craziness to plan a positive future. So we're not just bouncing around, buffeted around by all the change that's happening. We're, pl we're going somewhere. We have a plan. We're heading there. And uh, we're planning a positive future. And that's through no matter what changes, we're planning this positive future now. <clears throat> okay, so if we can take a minute, think about change. Can you think of a time, I'm going to ask you two questions to think about for a minute. Think of a time in the past 35 years when change has been good and positive in the world. Just think about that broadly. And then also think about a time when you created a positive change because you were intentional about it. Let's take a minute and think about that. But you do have the answer, though. <laughs> I have to answer it? I'm pretty sure you do. <laughs> I, I might have an answer. Actually, um, Gabe has an answer for me, I think. Right, Gabe? I think so. Tell me about uh, one positive thing that happened in the past 35 years. I think that uh, we set a really good example for human rights uh, by um, repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Okay, that was a very recent thing in the past 35 years, big change. Thank you. And how about, uh, Kate, do you want to tell me something about uh, an intentional change that you made that was for the good? I would love to. Thank you. Uh, I was uh, getting my PhD in Baltimore, Maryland uh, four years ago, and I dropped out, uh, which is just a serious change, a serious, scary thing. And because of that, I live in Beachville. Basically, I live in Beachville. Yeah, we've been needing to talk about that case. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy's trying to kick me out. It's terrible. I will nest in the back office. Uh, I get to live in Austin. I get to be a part of Beachville. I get to be a part of this. And that was uh, pretty intentional. Terrifying. Terrifying. Cool. So those are just some things to, you know, if you're having trouble thinking of something or whatever, things to think about. We've really become huge believers at Weedsville and setting a direction and an intention and the success that can come from that practice. So this idea is really one of the major drivers of articulating Wheatsville's big direction. Like we could have just kept it in our heads or whatever and not really talked about it, but we thought that it's really important to say what we're trying to do and why we're trying to do it. And uh, that's a good opportunity to share that because we believe in articulating the future and the positive future that we can have. So there's been a lot of change. There's even been a lot of change at Wheatsville since I got here in 1998. And so, we'll look at that for a second. So in 1998, sales were at 3.8 million. In 05, they got to about 5.1 million. In 09, which was the year when we were renovating, we got to 9.9 .9 million. The full year of the renovation, we did 14.4 million. And then this, uh, this year, we're planning to do $16 million in sales. So that's a lot of change. When I started, we had 60 staff. Last week, we had 136 staff. In 1998, we had 7,000 owners. We have about 11,000 owners right now. So change has happened at Wheatsville. A lot of change has already happened over the years. We've also had cultural change. We've gone from difficult years where we were really just lucky to be open, lucky to be around, to now where we're thriving and growing and planning a really exciting future. Over the years, we built a great team of managers and staff who have a track record of success. We're gonna build on that with the big direction. Management and staff are focused on ensuring that you have a great shopping trip today, if you go back to the store, an awesome Thanksgiving in a month or so. But we're also looking 30 years down the road for the concrete realization of, our, of the board's ends. So as you've seen, we've grown sales, we've added co-op jobs, we've become an excellent award-winning cooperative grocer, and the plan is to keep on doing that, but more. So what are we doing now in relation to big, the big direction? We've assembled a team of talented folks to help us plan our step from one store to a multi-store co-op grocer. A second store is logically our immediate next step. I have no location to announce today, uh, but we're using feedback from our owners, our own thorough understanding of Austin, uh, and a professional market study to decide the location that will yield the greatest opportunity for sex, success in the second store. We're really looking for a home run with our next store. We, uh, it's really important to us that we, we pick the right place. Once the location is secured, we're going to announce it and we'll plan a successful project and opening. 
Like I said, it could be as soon as next fall if things go well. Our plans call for us to be able to begin planning a third store a reasonable time after that. One thing's for sure though, none of our activity is gonna put Wheatsville at financial jeopardy. And in fact, it's gonna help us achieve our ends and do more good in the world. I'm driven by these things. None of these things say, put Wheatsville out of business. <laughs> I promise, these drive me. More cooperative economy is more, not less, not none. <clears throat> so what you can expect, continuing communication. Hopefully you're on our weekly email list, or you read the Wheatsville Breeze, or you're in Facebook or Twitter, that kind of thing. If you're not, those are good things to get hooked into so you can keep uh, apprised of what we're doing. We'll definitely communicate a lot about this over time. Beyond that, we really look forward to your support. You are our best advocates uh, and promoters. There may be an opportunity for owner investor share opportunities like there was for the renovation project that was such a huge success. So keep an ear out for that. <clears throat> so I'm rounding the corner here, almost done. We have an exercise to do right after this. But I just wanna say I'm so excited about the good that Wheatsville is gonna create with the big direction. More local organic sustainable food, more cooperative economy, more happy people. And we're gonna create that together, working together, working towards the big direction. And I continue to feel so lucky and so proud to be in this role at this special co-op, a values-based business, and, and I really appreciate your continued trust and support. So thank you.